This video was sponsored by Skillshare, the generous donations of patrons of the Lazy Eyebrow and from the support of viewers like you. Thank you! Why, hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow to review of not one, not two, but three figures running on the same mold. This is the review for Siege Prowl, Generation Select Smokescreen, and 35th Anniversary Blue Streak. Three figures that aren't more or less the same figure, but were all featured in the original cartoon, so, much like the Seekers, well, we can thank Hasbro for making this process of getting them all clear and straightforward. Prowl was easy to find. They had plenty of copies at every Walmart and Toys R Us. Smokescreen, because I live in Canada, I had to pre-order three EB games, which for 55% of you, that's GameStop. Finally, in order to celebrate the 35th anniversary of Transformers as a brand, Hasbro released four figures that were a limited run and really hard to come by. In fact, they never showed up in any store near where I live. All right, Mr. CEO, so here's what I'm thinking for our 35th anniversary. I'm thinking a subline of repaints of characters that everybody will love. With you so far? So I'm thinking Optimus and Megatron. Optimus and Megatron are so well known. They're the leader of the Autobots and Decepticons, respectively. So I figure a Devastation style cell shaded repaint of the both of them would sell like hotcakes. I mean, that art style was really well liked by a good portion of our customer base. What else do you got? Alright, so everyone loves Soundwave, and everyone loves black repaints. Black Bumblebee? Is that what I'm hearing? Simmons, you're a genius! Actually, no, I was thinking more along the lines of Sound Blaster, that one character from the Headmaster's cartoon where he was rebuilt from Sound Wave. And then we'll do Black Bumblebee. Actually, I was thinking more along the lines of Repaint of Prowl, into this really niche character that very few people have heard of into... Blue... Blue... Blue Streak? Is that how you pronounce his name? You mean that character we made eight different versions of in our Masterpiece subline and they all sold like hotcakes? Yeah, I figured he was niche enough for a limited run. He's practically unheard of. You hear that, Jeffries? Now this is why Simmons is my idea, man. He's a genius! You think this is a good idea? Just wait till you hear about my plan for next year where we make everything an exclusive. Ranting aside, it was difficult for people to get their hands in the old blue streak, was my point. I only got him as a gift from a fellow from the States named Miguel. So, basically, to Miguel and Jameson, this review is for you. So these three figures are impressive in their own right. I bought them during a time when Earthrise wasn't even on the horizon from our perspective, and I thought they were super cool then. And, well, I still think they are now. Mind you, this perspective also explains why Prowl was custom-painted to look a little more earthy, something I stopped doing once I found out that Earthrise was going to be a thing. As for these vehicles themselves, I rather like them. All Cybertronian and sleek-looking. To some extent, they remind me of the old Jaguar E-Type, just the way everything is shaped, but kind of modernized. And honestly, I think that's really cool. I like it when they try new takes on classic figures with different cars. Jazz doesn't always have to be of 935. I appreciate it when he is, but different takes are really cool too. And same goes with these guys. Let's go over them individually though on their own merits, and then we'll talk about the overall package again. Prowl is in his classic Japanese police car color scheme, which, I'm not gonna lie, sort of irks me. I'll, I'll get into that in a bit. For now, I'll address the question everyone's probably asking, and what the heck did you do to your Prowl? So I had Prowl first, and I wasn't a fan of all the clear plastic, and before I get into it, this was before I had an airbrush, so it's a little rough, but yeah, alterations I did include painting rubber tires and the weird translucent wheels, adding chrome to the headlights that went unpainted for some reason on this particular version, but not smokescreen or blue streak, painting the entirety of the window section black and extending that black onto the portion of the door, and then painting white to make it more earth-styled, like adding a roof and A-pillars and whatnot. Another thing I attempted was adding red in between the molded lines of the taillights. I didn't like that these were left solid black, and I thought adding in red to the indents would be an interesting look. I mean, after the paint, for an Earth-styled vehicle, I think it looks kind of cool, like a futuristic take on a Jaguar E-Type crossed with a Datsun S30. But yeah, going back to paint jobs, it really doesn't make sense that they specifically made him the Japanese police car color scheme. Like, sure, it says police and Autobot glyphs on the side, that's fine. And white and black in general as a police car, that's also fine. But the way it curves up on the hood, that's Japan. That is straight up Japan. That is a Japanese police car on an alien planet. Yeah, we're used to seeing them this way, but in this context, it makes no sense. Similarly for Smokescreen. Was he sponsored by Nissan on the Cybertronian circuits? His numbers are right random too, and I can't figure out their meaning. It comes up as 49. 
which I can only assume is like one higher than that of three and one higher than eight. And if that's all it is, then it's kind of lame. Like it's in Cybertronian. Only the most dedicated of nerds like myself are going to take the time to look up what it says. Why not make it some reference? Put the number 85, the year he showed up in G1. 83, a direct nod to Devendorf himself. Or just straight up 38. No one's really going to notice unless they do the research otherwise. It's just a bunch of nonsense on the side. But back to my original point. Why these colors? Smokescreen only had the colors he did because the Diaclone figure was based on the Don Devendorf driven Datsun 280ZX race car. Like Jazz was based on the Porsche race car with a martini livery. Like Wheeljack was based on the Group 5 rally car. Meanwhile, 20 years after G1, a prime example of a spiritual successor that makes sense, Alternator Smokescreen. Smokescreen is a predominantly blue and red figure, so to give him the 2003 Impreza WRC alt mode with the official WRC livery, that makes total sense for the character that still retains the spirit of the G1 Earth mode color scheme. I love it. Why isn't something like that present here? Basically, to have a Cybertronian car with Earth-styled livery just comes across as arbitrary and that they gotta have these colors because they gotta have these colors because the G1 had these colors, so we gotta have these colors. I think, at least canon-wise, it's kind of dumb in an inconsequential, nitpicky kind of way. Yes, I'm aware, I'm nitpicking. Blue Streak, on the other hand, now there's an alt mode worth gushing over. Just look at these colors! Of the three, this is my favorite car mode. It doesn't have the same deep metallic silver that the Masterpiece did, but this isn't the Masterpiece and that's alright. I still really feel like the two-tone color scheme with the dark grey base and the black stripe running up on top is such a classy color scheme for this mold, and I can't get enough of it. Unimportant side note, there's a 350Z running around Moncton with the same color scheme on it, and I think it looks just as fantastic on an actual car as I do for the model one. Other things they did on this include retaining the translucent wheels, but choosing a dark translucent instead of the bright blue that they used on Prowl. They added red to the taillights, which showcases my point on red in the indents instead of solid red. Like, red looks good and all, a lot better than black, but I find the idea of red behind black just looks that much better. I really like how the black stripe on top of the hood lines up with the windows, making the accent color of the car flow exceptionally well into the translucent dark plastic, and overall, it just looks so good. Just in short, Hasbro Takara proves to us once again that Blue Streak between the three of them has always and will always pull off the mold better in his color scheme, and vehicle mode aesthetics alone is what makes me prefer this guy over the other two. As for accessories, Blue Streak and Smokescreen come with the same three, and that's two shoulder mounted cannons and a handheld blaster, of which I cannot for the life of me figure out why Smokescreen's was cast in blue and then painted white, meanwhile his shoulder cannons were cast as white. Equally confusing is the fact that they should both be silver like Blue Streaks was. Either way, you can take the little ones and slot them into his hood, the blaster can peg into his roof, or you can take the little ones, plug them together, and pop them on top for even more firepower in a single port. It's War for Cybertron. Everything has a million ports these days. And since Blue Streak has the exact same accessories, he too gets the same functions. Basically, aside from paint, and strictly speaking vehicle-wise, Streak and Screen are identical in every way. Now regarding Prowl, the thing about Deluxe is that they have a limit on how much they can include. So on Prowl, because he's a Japanese Cybertronian police car, he has to have the signature light bar, which means something has to go. And since Prowl and Blue Streak were differentiated on screen in G1 not only by color, but also lack of shoulder cannons, Prowl gets to keep the rifle. This fact alone makes me wonder why a few people get uptight whenever I make the G1 comparisons and they respond with, Ugh! Not everything has to be G1! Stop comparing it to G1! And to that I say, have you seen the War for Cybertron line? Like just about every nod, reference, and detail about Siege and Earthrise comes straight out of the 80s. And if it wasn't for Kingdom finally resurrecting the 90s, we'd probably be still talking about that next year. Anyway, tangent aside, Prowl comes with the light bar and rifle. And given that they wanted mold accessibility for the other two, the light bar is removable on a 5mm peg. And yes, of course, this means we have interchangeability. So Blue Streak could be one of those undercover cops that puts on their lights whenever they get word from dispatch. Or Smokescreen could be an official pace car of the Trans Europe Express. For size comparison, here's Siege Prowl versus the Unit Class Orations one, where they were loosely attempting the Nissan 350Z with its molded in light bar. Again, you can see where the color scheme matches up to be exactly the same, aside from the English versus the Autobot Glyphs. The Combiner Wars version of Smokescreen, with the Nissan racing colors, like we just expect Smokescreen to have and to always have. Both of these comparisons really highlighting how small figures are getting with much higher prices. 
especially when you see the modern Studio Series figures scaling fairly well with their War for Cybertron brethren. Blame the economy for that, I guess. Further size comparisons, Siege, Sideswipe, and Ratchet, Mirage, and Hound, and yeah, they all more or less scale pretty well. Earthrise side of things compares us with Wheeljack and Hoist. So yeah, Siege Prowl, Select Smokescreen, and 35th Blue Streak are not too shabby little Cybertronian vehicle modes. Their shape is definitely reminiscent of the Datsuns they'll eventually become, as much as they remind you of the Jaguar E-types, and they fit in nicely with any of the Cybertronian molds from any of the previous lines. And as happy as I am that Earthrise became a thing, and then gave us Wave 1, and then basically sat on everything else for who knows how long, I do think it would have been cool to see more Cybertronian modes, like Bumblebee's weird dome car, or Wheeljack's van thing, or whatever jazz was here. But I am happy with what we got. Not exactly fond of certain details as I've covered previously, but, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's the color scheme we've attributed to the character, and 99% of you, had I not mentioned it, would not have known the difference. Now, if we could only get the rest of Earthrise out before the rest of Kingdom gets reviewed, that would be awesome. Anyway, let's take a break and hear a word from today's sponsor, and then we'll crack right into the robots. The Transformers will return after these messages. Skillshare is an online learning platform where millions come together to offer classics on topics on just about any subject, and not just for those that are serious bookworms. A lot of these classes are composed by people like you and I that just want to share something in their field of knowledge. Classes range from photography, video editing, stop motion, traditional animation, and more. Last week I went through Vladimir Mariano's Fusion 360 tutorials to learn how to design 3D printer projects as I was completely new to the program, and its interface is wildly different than what I'm used to. And in less than 90 minutes I had learned how to design tweezers, a coat hook, a wrench, and a vacuum hose attachment. Lessons on the site are broken down into 4-6 to six minute segments and usually a less than an hour span so that you can pick up where you left off or easily go back between sections if you miss something. Subscriptions can be annual or monthly based, though you should definitely go with the annual membership if you're looking for a better monthly value. However, if you're really looking for value, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a 2 month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. We now return to the Transformers. Welcome back. So to begin transformation, open the doors. Pull the back of the car away from the front. Rotate the feet forward. Fold out the heels and separate the legs. Going higher up, rotate the waist. Rotate the arms out and spread them apart. Extend the entirety of the front of the car on its rocker hinge. Fold out the abs. Bring the portion of the hood down and then slot that piece into his back while bringing that whole top of the chest over the head. Bring the arms down, install accessories, and you're done. And here we have before us three robots that couldn't look any closer to the Cybertronian version of the Datsuns if you tried. We have the feet of the back of the car, the hatch being the shins, and the entire front of the car is chest with door wings. Doesn't get any more fair lady than that. I like the sleek designs that these guys are sporting, something that seems to be the signature Cybertronian alien look, especially for these three it seems. And despite them all using the exact same mold, the colors that they're rocking and their placement really brings out each of their own personality from one to the other. They really do make quite the trio, despite them not actually being a dedicated group like the Seekers or the Insecticons, for example. As for them all individually, they look pretty good, and definitely hit the notes of the source material they were aiming for. Prowl, in his no-nonsense police officer color scheme, looks sharp, like a straight take on the G1 aesthetic but in Cybertronian format. The mold itself is a definite upgrade compared to the universe take. I mean, sure, it's smaller, a little ganglier, but it doesn't look near as awkward, which is great. And hey, if you really want the shoulder cannons like the universe had, you can just borrow the ones that come from Smokescreen. I mean, they're the right color and all. The best part is that compared to classics, Siege has the blast effects for all those laser blasts and dust. Smokescreen, on the other hand, looks about as smokescreen as one can get with the Nissan color scheme that we're used to seeing him as. However, one really cool thing they added that I find super cool is that the head sculpt is unique to the figure. I mean, I guess this isn't unique lately, as they've been nailing just about every head sculpt lately, but the fact that they didn't go the same route as Universe and just recolored the existing one is a nice touch. Heck, even Combiner Wars is a major culprit of taking the Prowl head, making it blue and yellow, telling us how well that's the G1 toy box art and calling it a day, but not Siege. Nope, we actually get the G1 cartoon accurate head sculpt, much like the Masterpiece had. It's a nice touch, and I am definitely all for that. And finally, we come to Blue Streak. 
Again, just like the Masterpiece, just like the G1 cartoon, just like Universe, just like the reissue box art, we take our gray and black classy car, transform him up, and red comes popping out of the woodwork, really adding that third color to really make him pop. Like, it just looks excellent. I don't know how much more I can say it. I really, really, really like Blue Streak's colors. I mean, he's more or less the Autobot version of the Megatron color scheme that turns into a car. In short, these guys look exactly like you'd expect a Cybertronian version of these three would look. The colors are spot on. Smokescreen's new head sculpt is such a nice touch. And in general, they look fantastic together. They look a lot more coherent than that decade-old universe mold, and in general, it's nice to have a new mold that isn't just combine a worse dead end in a new flavor. It's great. Articulation features a head on a ball joint that goes in full circle and can look down, though for whatever reason, Blue Streak can only look down. I don't know, maybe they're feeling a little down in the dumps because they know they're about to be replaced? The door wings can flap, although no option to angle them upward in any capacity. At this price point, I wasn't expecting it, but that doesn't make me not wish they would. Shoulder blocks can rotate, arms rotate out, elbows bend 90, and biceps swivel. Shoulders rotate as well as the wrists, waist rotation, legs go fully forward and backward making for full split, not only along the y-axis, but the x-axis too. Thigh rotation, well executed knee bend, ankle articulation not only forward and backward, but outward too. It's such a wide variety of movement, it's great. Other features include a 3mm display port found behind the roof in robot mode, making for a really awkward placement, like you can only get in there if you have a hinge right at the end of your display arm. Other features are of course their accessories. All three of them still get the rifle, but Prowl, as mentioned before, has his light bar as his second accessory. Well, he can just take that right off his back and pop that into his rifle to really advertise to other Cybertronians that he's a unit of law enforcement. Past the firewall, accessing the database, database disabled, downloading database, Cortana, turning XMP off, and CPU, installing spyware, scrambling circuits. Freeze! Cheese it, it's the fuzz! What gave what you was that your first idea? Clue? Smokescreen and Blue Streak get to turn their shoulder cannons into, like, double barreled blasters? Just feel like they're more visually appropriate for the likes of Titans Return, Astro Train, and Shuttle Mode, or even the likes of the Earthrise Seekers. Given that whole extra 5mm thing, you can give out the notion to the missile pods that the MP had while also retaining the null rates. Loads of playability options. Speaking of playability options, another thing I like is the way they engineered these shoulder blocks. The 5mm port is on the top of the blocks, making the blocks themselves accurate while retaining the outward range of movement. However, they also made the provision that the blocks themselves can rotate out, giving full functionality to the weaponizers and that whole subgenre of gimmickry. It's a simple but elegant solution, I gotta say. But this is Siege after all, which means 5mm ports out the wazoo, which allows for some serious arsenal equipping. And as always, ports on the bottom of the feet for the Voyager class adapter bits. I mean, look at how tall Smokescreen is. Anybody that says he's not Voyager class is only lying to themselves. For size comparison, Deluxe class Cliff Jumper, Deluxe Red Alert, and Deluxe Ironhide. Titans Return B, Combiner Smokescreen, and Universe Prowl. G1B, G1 Ricochet, and G1 Optimus. Leader class Decepticons. And finally, I'm sure at least one person wanted this comparison, Masterpiece Figures. So that's been my review for Siege Prowl, Select Smokescreen, and 35th Anniversary Blue Streak. I really like these three, and they look fantastic together. It's just such a shame they had to be such a pain to get a hold of. And I know full well that nothing has changed as the Earthrise counterparts are pulling the same stunt, by one being General Retail, the other an online exclusive found only in a two-pack that Amazon Canada said I would have by last Tuesday and failed to give any further updates, and Blue Streak just being leaked and no info on to whether it really is an exclusive or not, but I don't think any of us would be surprised if that turns out to be true. Availability rants aside, as for these figures themselves, I really do enjoy them. I mean, they're not perfect. Prowl's weird wheels before paint being a good example of that. Not to mention the really thin leg proportions is a bit weird. But that aside, if you can't find the inevitable Earthrise releases, these are not a bad alternative by any stretch. And if you prefer your wheels not being held on by visible pegs, then they're great for that too. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow.